Hello, everyone. Day three, Open GovCon. Welcome back. So I'm proud to uh, introduce uh, Sindra. Yeah, Sindra. Yeah, uh, I Sindra, tried. Yeah, I tried. It's so hard. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a really interesting topic here from the JFrog team of just the experience of curating open source software, working with GovCloud kind of products. So just mm -hmm. interested to hear the journey. Over to you, good sir. Oh, can you guys hear me okay? All right, excellent. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for stopping by here. I think I just want to quickly set the context in terms of you know why, how this presentation, and then also from a problem perspective, how this showed up, right? So I've been doing this, I've been in this, in this space for some time, spent a lot of time uh, working for open source software like Cloud Foundry and XIBM or XPivotal, and also spent some time with special operation forces and some, uh, have seen firsthand in terms of how from a code commit, how long it takes to go through people and the processes in order to get your you know, build code or a binary or an artifact from a low side or a unclassified environment to the classified side of the house, right? And unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, processes and people involved in between and I've seen anywhere between a day to three days and sometimes even more than that and based on people's availability and things like that. And I'm talking about national security mission critical applications getting deployed and who, which can save people's life and bring people back home. So in this context, a lot of, lot of times the software getting built these days are um, a lot of dependencies on the open source component what that means from a developer uh, perspective, from a from that context, that involves um, what we call as curation or curating, making sure uh, the software components that you are bringing in, especially those open source components, are safe or or somewhat. Um, you, you should have visibility into into the vulnerabilities and do they have any. Uh, not so license compliance issues, but you might want to make sure that it's free of malicious packages or everybody is talking about these days. So curation and securing this open source component has has become a you know primary uh, thing on everybody's mind, right, including the developers. So this this presentation is mostly about how do we take how do we kind of automate. Um, the curation of open source bit um, in in an automated fashion to an extent, and also have a visibility in terms of you know what components that you are bringing in, and then and and have a, a, a repeatable and auditable uh, you know a traceability in terms of you know who requested what and when we curated that right. So that's the thing. So I want to actually uh, be uh, very conscious on on the problem that we are trying to solve here and the approaches that we are taking, not necessarily talking about the tools and the product here. In the, in the, for the sake of this demonstration or you know, from this presentation perspective, I will be using um, some tools from the company that I work for, JFrog. It's been in for forefront in putting out an open source version of Artifactory, which everybody uses. And also uh, our scanning software, X-Ray, uh, which looks at some of these vulnerability, not just the vulnerability, but also from a contextual information and things like that. So again, uh, quick. Uh, and then the second thing, the, from a context, uh, context perspective, Abhi, I was working, and again, this pattern I've been seeing working with some of these agencies is, hey, either the development is happening on the lower side, uh, or the development is happening on the high side, right? And usually when I say high side with the classified networks, but completely air-gapped. And sometimes, or most of the time, that's completely cordoned off. The developers who are actually developing um, their piece of software on the high side usually you know, have some sort of a CI uh, that, they, uh, that they use but, but most of the time, 
this this thought i mean this entire thing came up uh, kind of shaped up because you know one of these agencies reached out to us and said look we are developing on the high side the developers are running their ci and then they are usually hitting a uh, you know library 400 not found error and then we we basically have a system of record like you know jira or service now or some some ticketing system that that they open up at service ticket and then they spend next a day and a half trying to, uh, somebody has to collect all those tickets, go on to the low side, and then basically have to download this piece uh, software bits and the dependency. They have to calculate what dependencies that this, this Docker image or a, as an example, Python uh, library requires. And then download that bits and try to run through some sort of a scanner and then once that is done, then they have to basically bring that bits back onto the high side, and then they can run their CI, you know, uh, the, their pipeline. And this turnaround, uh, this is actually, this factual was probably around two days, or sometimes even more, based on what they are requesting, right? So they asked us how we could help out, and, and again, this problem statement, this this pattern has been been I've been hearing this with everybody that I'm talking to and and again you know um, the approach that we took here maybe one of the approaches there are multiple ways to solve this but but from a definition of the software supply chain like we all talking with the the we talked about our talking about is composed of you know components or libraries or tools and it's not just the executable, right? It's also the processes that used to build or develop and build and publish a software artifacts. So that involves the metadata, configuration files, secrets, everything associated with it. And most of the time, there are uh, centralized public repositories like Maven Central or you know, Docker Hub and things like that where the developers are heavily rel relying upon right to these public libraries and then they bring in the, these open source components as an example and then store it in a, in a repository and then they use CI to build. And again, that would involve configuration secrets and things like that. And then they once they build, they will do a promotion, then they do a release that basically has to be uh, distributed uh, to you know plethora of devices, right? You know, it could be an IoT or a public cloud or a distributed edge and, you know, uh, and everything in between. So the point I'm trying to make is this, the, the software development life cycle that involves all the way from the left to the right has to be, um, one needs to have, it, it could be a DevOps or it could be a security a persona as well. They need to have a complete auditability and then they need to have a visibility into what they're bringing in and again, uh, sitting at the open source, uh, open SSF conference. I mean, a lot of SBOM software bill of materials that everybody is talking about, whether it is complete, how do we generate one, there are a bunch of tools and then they're getting fragmented right now in terms of, you know, uh, what's complete, right? And I mean, that's, but, but again, it's a, a step in the right direction, but we need to have a tool that will give you an ability to, uh, realistically list out what components that you are bringing in, what the dependencies, and also making sure that those uh, bits are securely uh, transferred uh, from, uh, uh, from, uh, from, a, from, a, from a development phase to the build phase to the release phase so that it can, that you have a visibility into terms of you know, what you have deployed onto, onto the production. And, what type of vulnerabilities or security issues that 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 needs? This is the whole uh, the the software supply chain, and and again, you know, all of us know we are trying to blur the distinction between these disjointed teams, like you know, uh, the security or development or ops and SRE. You know, if you rewind back, like you know, ten years ago, suddenly the DevOps uh, term was coined and. And, and, and people were scratching their head about, you know, how do I work with an operations team who is trying to deploy my code onto the production server? And then, 
you know, uh, then this concept, this, this term of, you know, reliability engineering, uh, SRE team, and then also all of a sudden security team who are completely isolated and working in their own isle, island was now actively talking to the developer in terms of, you know, what needs to be done. And again, I just want to make sure that these disjointed teams, the, 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 the uh, distinction between them is blurring. And again, the SBOM is here, right? The, with the May, it's, it's two years now. And executive order mandates you to have a visibility into terms of, you know, what you need to know. What everybody should know, like if you're a consumer or a producer, you should know what components that you're packaging and that need, and if, if, if the government is consuming that. Or any public website or an agency, civilian, civilian or DOD, they need to be uh, completely visible of what the SBOM should look like. And again, every, uh, the zero trust, right? And which software component that you can trust these days depends on what package types and uh, suddenly the binary life cycle management becomes super critically important because the binary is something that's going to run on the production system on your runtime, not your source code. But it's a philosophical debate in terms of you know, what runs on your runtime, but, but, but at the, about the end of the day, the binary that what you build, the metadata, what you associated with it, and or, you know, uh, configuration, the binary uh, life cycle management is super important. Again, I want to actually start, and this is the uh, premises of this presentation is, you know, developer requesting a piece of software, if they're running in any, you know, pipeline like Jenkins or TFS, they basically run in a, a write repository or uh, the write repository, think about write repository is something that you have access to your libraries that uh, you know, from a developer perspective. And then you have, again, I kind of distinct this between DevOps and the SecOps persona, and you have those open repositories. Again, uh, we have JFrog Enterprise Plus here, but, but this could be any repository manager that you could stand up in two different environments, right? So again, the right repositories in this in this presentation, this right repository is on the high side, let's say, and this open repository is stood up on the uh, on the DMZ, uh, and which has access to the inter internet. And again, this right repo is completely cordoned off, and then the developer that requests the piece of library that needs to be created, the request flows into this open repo. And then it goes off to the internet, downloads the bit, and with the security policies that needs to be vetted against these libraries, now you can run the scanner, and, and once, uh, once the bits are blessed by the security team, the artifacts can be transferred back to the right repositories, and then developer uh, can have access to those libraries, right? So, so the question is, you know, how do you how do you automate this process in terms of self curation process and and again i'm uh, once the bits are available and then you build a piece of software you have access to the sbom you can promote um, the bits to the uh, read uh, read or archive repositories like read only repositories that could be uh, safely distributed after your runtime right that could be kubernetes or vms or whatnot but, but the process of distribution uh, from your read-only repository to, the, uh, to, you, to your runtime also needs to be uh, tampered proof, meaning you need to securely distribute the piece of software from, um, uh, from, from your read repository to the distribution cache. Again, guys, I mean, this is the, 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 the curation is as important as the curation of open source libraries or third party libraries or COTS or whatnot, the distribution of the software uh, or artifacts is equally important to the runtime. So as, as I've seen this firsthand, the, the ISO image or, a, or, a, 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 or an artifact which is put on a hard drive or, a, or on a DVD that gets blessed by the cyber folks and then you walk into a secure facility and then load it onto the onto the network. 
there can many things that could go wrong and and these days with 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 the leaks that has happened in the past you know three months or six months it's we want to actually make sure these artifacts are securely distributed meaning there should be a some sort of a you know signing that needs to happen on this artifact so that when the artifact gets on to the high side you need to have a ability to decrypt and making sure it's not tampered along the way right and that's the one of the uh, uh, philosophies or the the from a from a mechanics aspect of it is equally important when it comes to the curation and and also distribution aspect of this right again um, and what we call this as a ship right so again getting into the uh, crux of this presentation so i have uh, two environments so the secure environment you can think about this as a, a high side this where development is happening your developers are sitting and they're running their ci they're trying to request a piece of software and again this artifact there is four workflows that we have worked out here right so one is the preparation workflow i'm going to go through what this means here in a bit the uh, in a high level preparation workflow is basically a process or a pipeline that sits on the high side and basically looks at the developer request that, and then it sits out and look for either 400 not found or you know the, those catches those uh, uh, request errors and then it can actually build a piece of JSON you know payload JSON file which has calculated all the uh, libraries and the dependencies that needs to be created, right? And then, again, uh, based on uh, your system of record, you could open up a support ticket or you can carry this JSON uh, uh, a payload or a file onto the external environment, right? Which is where the curation workflow is in another set of pipeline which will basically get triggered based on this JSON payload. And then that's curation uh, external environment is something that you could stand up in the DMZ environment and it could go off to the uh, centralized repository, download the bits and then have your scanner scanned. And then if the scanner scans it and then not, no vulnerability is found, you could transfer that back to a repository that could be uh, 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 as a scanned repositories. If, if there is a problem, you can actually block the download, isolate it in that way uh, you have a, uh, and then alert the, the end user saying that you're downloading the piece of, a, you know, a, a, a library that has vulnerability into it. And, and again, once this is done, there is a bundle workflow that will actually bundle all the, it goes to each of those repositories uh, in this external environment and then picks up those bits and the dependency based on the path where it is stored. And then it builds what we call as a release bundle or a bundle. Think about bundle as a, a compressed zip file. Uh, and then we have an ability to sign that so that each of those artifacts has a checksum associated with it and SHA associated with it. And then you can uh, transfer however you want to in, in terms of ISO image or put it on a DVD or a hard drive, get it scanned by your cyber. And then uh, coming back to the secure environment, you can, you can load that. There's a load workflow that could basically load these release bundle and then uh, populate the uh, uh, repositories within, the, uh, within, within your artifact manager so that it's available. And then you can alert the end user in terms of you know, what it is, uh, what they're requesting is made available and things like that. Any, any questions so far? All right. Um, so from a from a from a secure environment perspective, again we talked about this. The developers who are running uh, the CI pipeline uh, basically request a package, right? And usually the packages such as like Docker or the Python libraries usually have some dependencies that needs to be uh, uh, that needs to be managed as well or needs to be brought in along with the certain package that they're requesting. And then uh, what we have done is we have wrote a simple Python script that will basically generate this manifest 
with all the package requests. And usually you could do this once a day, uh, depends on how many uh, user requests and, and if you're using a, uh, a Jira or a service or whatever the system of record, you could basically go after and produce this uh, manifest and then gets returned to a, uh, you know, a JSON file that needs to be carried out to the, uh, carried out to the next external environment. So again, uh, the external environment, this manifest that, that, that you brought in from the secure environment will have to be processed to figure out all the dependencies that needs to be downloaded. And the way we are doing this is uh, the, the pulling the dependencies from an uh, external environment, such as you know, Maven Central or whatnot, as an example, the, uh, from, an, from an artifactory perspective, from the JFrog artifactory perspective, you could actually uh, configure an artifact uh, repository as a remote repo pointing to an external environment and then you can download the bits, cache it, and then have X-ray look at that, uh, which is our scanning software, look at that, and then as we download that bits, you can get scanned uh, in the real time. And then if, if, there is a, if there isn't any issues, then the scans will fail, or when the scans fails, then you can basically isolate that bits. If, if the scan succeeds, then you basically copy the contents of this remote repository to the local repos, right? The local repository construct is basically a local repository where your developer had access to. And then again, this would be a, a trigger to the bundle workflow. Um, so as I uh, talked about as a disclaimer in the beginning, this, this, this whole presentation is, uh, is based on the conceptual what you could do to curate open source bet. And as part of this presentation and the workflow, we are using, uh, you know, JFrog, X-Ray, uh, you know, the components that what the platform comprises of Artifactory, X-Ray, and JFrog pipelines to demonstrate this. Um, again, from a uh, in the external environment with this uh, bundle workflow, again, uh, if 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 you are curating one library versus, you know, hundreds of libraries that needs to be downloaded. And X-ray and, and scanned. Uh, this gathering this curated packages could become a problem, uh, meaning you might have to traverse through the multiple paths or you know versions and pick up the one that you need, and 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 then create a bundle out of it. Right, bundle could be a a, a compressed zip file, and and things like that. So the 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 problem is the if you are Moving this to a uh, moving this to a, a air gap environment, you might want to do basically uh, copy this bundle to a distribution area so that it we could do what we call as an offline distribution. That means uh, that means that it could be downloaded onto your you know uh, your your uh, USB drive or a, a DVD or a CD, and then somebody has to physically transfer this. Uh, to to the secure environment. So the the automation aspect of creating the bundle or uh, curation is what is going to save you time. But at the same time, we are not recommending here that you should bypass your cyber or your processes that you already have in place to get it scanned and authorized before you take it back to the uh, to the to the secure environment. Again, once the once the release bundle or a bundle uh, makes it into the uh, uh, to the high side or to the secure environment, you can actually need to have an ability to load those packages into appropriate local repositories, meaning into the into into appropriate paths, uh, so that it's available for your end user when they are looking up for a certain libraries that needs to be part of their CI uh, build to happen. So there is some work that, that, um, that has to be done in terms of an automation uh, so that you load this bundle. And then the second thing that's primarily important is you want to make sure that as part of your load uh, package, 
you have to make sure this bundle is not tampered along the way. Um, from, a, from the tool perspective, we, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the previous step, we actually, on creating what we call as a release bundle, which is basic, basically a, a construct of, uh, of gathering all the packages, and then each of those uh, packages has been signed by GPG keys. And when you bring it onto this secure environment, as part of this load package, a bundle is basically checked for its integrity uh, so that it, it, the, the load will fail if the package is tampered or the signature is changed along the way, right, and on the pipe. So that having said that, once the packages are load, loaded, you, you have to generate some sort of a notification to the requesting user, right? It could be closing up the support, uh, closing up the tickets or uh, um, telling the notification to the end user saying that the requested package is there and it's in, been in the appropriate directories and things like that, right? So this, this is basically an approach, and again, I'm so not saying this is the only way to solve this problem, but this would greatly uh, 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 increase the developer velocity, and then also second thing, it's, it, it's securely your uh, curating and also transferring the bits so that the distribution of the packages from the, uh, uh, from the especially open source component, open source libraries has been blessed, signed, and then you know you can have some sort of a trust in terms of you know, what needs to be, you know, how, how this to be, that needs to be loaded onto the high side as well. So with this, I wanna actually uh, quickly show you Again, this is a artifactory user interface here. And then the way uh, we have built some pipelines that, that automate and you know, demonstrates what we talked about in the last 20 minutes or so. So I wanna actually quickly show you, we have this gated Docker pipeline. And if you look at one of these runs, uh, look at the resources, the, start with the JSON <coughs> payload that I was talking about. The payload could be as simple as this as a demonstration purpose as we are trying to bring down like you know, three or four libraries here, packages here. And then as part of this, it, this, this gated Docker pipeline basically goes off um, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the central repositories and then executes a, you know, uh, written a you know, Python uh, the script. What I wanted to actually show you is as part of this, it goes, downloads it, and then have X-ray scans it, and if X-ray blesses it, it gets copied out to the local repositories. Right at the towards the end of it, you you would see there are successfully curated one library, and then failed to curate a couple of them because there was a vulnerability that was founded, that was discovered and then we kind of block the download. And, and same, thing, same thing I have uh, with, the, with the gated uh, PyPy as well. I was trying to uh, sh uh, curate four Python libraries as well. So what I want to do is, you know, the, once these two pipelines are run, I also have what we call as a, a create release bundle, which, which could be run uh, every day or once in 24 hours. The, the way I have triggered this is, it basically looks at last 24 hours, if there are, uh, your, my PyPy and then Docker pipeline runs successfully, then it automatically goes and creates a release bundle for you, right? And, and looking at this, it, it basically uh, executes an another Python script that basically calls and, you know, RESTful APIs on the, Artifactory to create some of the release bundle, right? And then once it says repository successful, we can go back uh, to the release bundle construct here. Uh, release bundle, as I talked about, this is the JFrog artifactory way of creating a release bundle. And again, the release bundle is signed. 
And if you look at this example release bundle, this was created a couple of hours ago. And you could, you could basically look at the version and, and look at the content of it, right? And the, if, if this looks like there are four files in here, and then it has a manifest JSON, it has a SHA for each of the uh, curated piece. And then you can also look at the release bundle info. And this is what I was talking about, the artifacts that it brings in or what the X-ray has blessed and the bundle has. You notice that each one of them has a SHA associated with it so that you exactly know what you're packaging and then you can version this release bundle as well, right? As you, as you run more of these pipelines, this release bundle could be versioned. And then the way you could do this is you could uh, distribute this version. If there is a connecti connectivity, let's say, between your uh, low side and to a high side, sometimes you, know, you have one-way connectivity, then you could actually distribute that version, but it needs an online artifactory server on the other side. But most of the time, it, you don't. And then the way you do this is do what we call as an offline uh, version, offline distribution, that basically bundle is basically brought down to your laptop or wherever you want to store that. And you can download that version. Uh, and, and, then on the, and, and then you basically transfer this back onto the high side. And on the high side, uh, I'm going to be logging in here. You could you could basically uh, uh, go go to the distribution here and look look at the release bundle that has been received so far, and and if you look at this example bundle, there are a couple of them that I did like a couple of hours ago where you could uh, you you look at the version of it as part of this importing a importing a file this release bundle file onto this, you can look at the files that were brought in. And as part of this load, um, uh, it basically populates the artifacts uh, from, a, from a repository perspective and also uh, appropriate permissions and things like that. But, but, but anyway, the point I'm trying to show you here is it is it, the distribution with the GPG kinds, GPG signing on the, on the low side and bringing on to the high side and then uh, all of these actions could be uh, auditable, logged, and then the, you know, uh, uh, notifying a an user would, would have you a visibility in terms of you know, how your package uh, traversed all the way from downloading that bit on, on the low side and, and coming all the way to the secure side in terms of it from a distribution perspective. So, this is basically the crux of what I wanted to show you today, and then I would be, I've, I have five more minutes here before, you know, if you have any thoughts on how this could have been done differently or how we are doing it, and if there are any questions, we'll be happy to, happy to answer. So, uh, I've, I've worked with a number of pipelines like this, um, you know, so low side, isolated high side, or, or secure area. Uh, it's a great example of how one way to get stuff into there. Um, of course, you know, inevitably then tomorrow, the next log for J, log for shell happens. I need to figure out what I've got on the high side and, and what needs to be updated and, and figuring out what needs to be updated while I'm sitting up on the high side. It, it seems particularly difficult. So with this sort of workflow, how do you handle that figuring out what's out of date, what needs updated, things like that. Absolutely. So again, um, I want to be conscious on, uh, um, I want to I, I, I want to be conscious on open source way of solving this versus a, a, a vendor lock-in and a tool. I will tell you how a JFrog artifactory and X-ray we do this. So we do something called runtime um, CVE extractions the 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 you, the this goes back and goes back into what we call as a zero day vulnerability right so you tomorrow could be another vulnerability that could be that could be discovered on the piece of software that you're running in your production system so i think there is a bunch of ways to 
extract and have a visibility in terms of SBOMs, which SBOM has been pushed and what version of it has pushed onto the production or into, when I say production, onto your runtime. And then there's no easy way to discover uh, un unless you actively monitor what, what you're running on your runtime and then how do you discover a new vulnerabilities that's being found on it, right? So there is no easy way to do that. But having said that, there are tools in the industry that are working towards this. And we at JFrog, we are a few months away from releasing what we call as a runtime extraction capability that could give you um, a visibility into you know, how you could solve that. But having said that, the SPOM is the, is the key. It, the, the, having a traceability of which version of SBOM, the versioning of it, and know what exactly you pushed onto the runtime would probably help you. Again, there's not an easy way, one push button to tell you how do you extract it, but I, I, on the current uh, artifactory, there are ways that you could write some plugins to extract the CVEs from the runtime and then act on it. Uh, but, but again, uh, we are working on that have it has, as a product features that would enable you. Yes, thank you for the talk. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about the like notification in the secure environment part. There were some keynotes earlier in the week and some st stuff at uh, CDCon about CD events and automatically kicking off CI CD processes based on an event driven model. And I mean, I'm cautious about vendor lock in and JFrog, but I'm curious if there's, if JFrog has something like that or if there's any other technologies like that that you know of that would be useful for once an artifact arrives in the secure environment, automating the start or of a CI CD process. Yeah, absolutely. And again, uh, I'll tell you what I have seen what JFrog can do as well. Um, that's what I have seen is very rudimentary, right? You know, the, uh, it's still manual process in terms of, you know, letting a developer know that there is a piece of software artifact. And again, I've, I've heard this from many agencies and, and this is one of the problems, right? The, the, peop, the, the folks who are actually running the CI build doesn't know when their, art, when their library is has arrived or curated and made available to them. Um, there are multiple ways they were, I've seen people using some system of record like what I talked about, like Jira or Confluence and, or even vendor locked in things like ServiceNow. Again, again, there are people involved in this, right? And there's no automated way of solving this. Um, again, it's evolving uh, with with uh, going coming back to the JFrog way of doing it, we have um, obviously web hooks into you know Atlassian or you know Jira or ServiceNow and things like that where uh, you could you could get alerted on. Uh, but but I think there is no rocket science in terms of you know how do you do it. But I think the most important thing is the discipline and the traceability of um, looking at the request package, uh, who requested it, right? I think the one of the critical things that when it comes to the curation is it's not what you are curating. It's all about who requested that package and uh, why they requested it and tracing all the way back to the end developer who requested it in the first place and opening up that ticket in the service now or Jira on their behalf so that when the package get, gets curated and transferred back to the high side, you need to know, you need to, you need to let the developer know, right? So uh, at JFrog, we have, we have implemented that workflow using, you know, things like this, but we have open sourced it as well. You can, I'm happy to share that. But, but again, there are multiple ways to do this, right? That's what the, uh, but, but again, I didn't sit through the uh, open SSF, that, the one that you specifically referenced, but happy to learn if there are any other ways to do it. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Awesome.
Thank you.